Hey guys, welcome. This is uh, Luke with uh, Hanson's Coaching Services, and uh, we are going to try to do something that uh, we tried last week or two ago. It didn't work out quite so well. Um, I screwed it up like I figured I would, but uh, I think I know what I did wrong, and uh, I'm going to try to do uh, our podcast that uh, we usually do. And I'm going to try to do it in this format, and it will uh, hopefully work out this time. So we're going to talk about uh, metabolic efficiency, the second part to our uh, our first podcast about metabolic efficiency. So last time we talked about the training uh, aspect of it, and this time we're going to talk a little bit about some of the dietary uh, considerations for being more metabolically efficient. So here's where I messed it up last time. We'll have to see if this works and all right so I think now you can see what I am looking at and do a slideshow so our sweet little uh, entry shot Metabolic efficiency, part two. Just a little recap of what we've done. Already discussed training and manipulations we can do um, from that aspect, and uh, we had a quite quite a lengthy discussion uh, over an hour, um, just talking about training and aspects of uh, of, of training that will help you uh, be able to burn fat more efficiently, efficiently, and save the uh, carbohydrate stores. Um, Interesting enough, when I started looking at the dietary aspect of it, it was almost amusing to me just the idea that uh, the more I was looking at this, it wasn't anything crazy. It wasn't anything spectacular. It was really more about eating a well-balanced diet, and, and there was no secret formula to this. It wasn't any different types of foods. It was really more about just following – good dietary practices and, and you'll probably end up all right. It's just that, especially here in the U.S., we just eat so much crap that uh, we tend to get away from what's good. And we, it's not that we don't know what's good for us. It's just that we a lot of times don't do it or make excuses like we don't have time or something to that effect. And in in real, reality, it's, it's, it's just finding the right balance of um, – eating just better stuff for us. Um, nothing was ever referred to as being low carbohydrate, just better choices or, you know, high fat or anything like that. It was just better choices. So less grains and more veggies. You know, I think a lot of times we forget that carbohydrates are coming in forms of fruits and vegetables as well, not just breads and pastas and things like that. Um, you know, talking about getting rid of empty carbohydrates. Although, you know, my view in training, they are going to have a place, you know, with, with sports drinks and, you know, if you're out on a long run and you need uh, carbohydrates, that's a good source of getting those carbohydrates. It's a lot of, a lot of uh, good things are coming from that, but from your general diet, no, those things aren't necessarily needed very much. Um, and some of the things I read was, you know, replacing white potatoes, white flour, refined sugars, white rice, replace those with whole grains and high fiber foods. Um, you know, you know, eat, you know, more of a sweet potato type of thing, whole grain flour, things like that, and focus on lean protein and veggies. And doing just doing those things are gonna are gonna help you so much. And I think we try to overcomplicate, overcomplicate, it and we think that there's some secret formula, and it really it really isn't a secret formula at all. So one article I read was calculating the meta, discuss calculating metabolic efficiency and what it actually meant um, and it's really looking at the carbohydrate reading minus the amount of fiber that's coming in that meal and divide that by the amount of protein that you're eating and that's going to be your ratio that you're looking at you know so obviously the higher the, the fiber and the higher the protein the lower the ratio is going to be so you know if you're really looking at being efficient you're looking at, at like a one-to-one uh, ratio, but 
I don't think that necessarily fits with endurance athletes. Uh, I think, you know, if you're, if you're on downtime or something like that, or you're hurt, maybe that lower ratio is where you want to be just to monitor, you know, weight gain and just keeping everything in balance. However, what I saw was more in that two to one range. But even then, I think you look at things like if you're doing a 10 mile tempo run or you're doing a long run on a Sunday, that ratio can be even higher. Although I couldn't really find, find anything, but, um, just doing some calculations on my own, you know, I'm thinking like if you're doing a long run, that could even be a three, four or five to one ratio, depending on what, on what you're doing. So again, like everything we we've looked at, you know, it's going to, it's going to vary from what you're doing on a day to day basis. So if you have a off day on Wednesday, yeah, aim for that lower ratio. But if you're doing, you know, a 10 mile tempo and doing 14 miles of, of high aerobic running, then don't be afraid of those carbohydrates as long as they're the right carbohydrates and uh, you're going to replace those glycogen stores. So just keep that in mind. Because by controlling the, the metabolic efficiency, what you're looking at is uh, really controlling the blood sugar. And if you go back into that first podcast we've done, we, we talked about the effect that a high blood sugar is going to have on insulin levels and things like that, and kind of that vicious cycle that you can you can get into. Um, so I won't re, I won't go over it again now. Go back and look at that one. And if you haven't podcast, definitely definitely start out um, on a further and reduce food cravings. And your mother said, you know, eat something that's going to stick to your ribs. This is really kind of what you're talking about. You're going to feel full longer. Um, incur it's going to encourage weight loss because of those things. If you're if you're not craving those carbohydrates, you're not craving something that's just going to burn through your system really quick, then you're not going to eat as much. So from a simple calorie standpoint, it can help with, with weight loss. And not necessarily, and even if you're not looking at weight loss in particular, which a lot of athletes don't need to, um, it's going to encourage burning the fat stores better. And, and that's going to help kind of keep everything in check. Um, and along with that, encourage the usage of fat of all intensity levels. Because if you're able to burn that fat at a higher intensity, you're going to burn higher levels throughout all intensities, especially even lower intensities. That and that's really what you want. You want to be, you know, ideally you're burning the majority of your energy needs are going to come from fat. You know, just sitting around, uh, walking around, things like that. And as you increase that intensity you still are going to shift towards relying more on carbohydrate at higher intensities, at super high intensities, but things at like marathon pace um, to even maybe like half marathon pace, you're still, instead of maybe being like a, a 50, 50 ratio at marathon pace, maybe now it's a 60% fat usage to a 40% carbohydrate uh, usage at that intensity. When that's huge, right? That's, that's a 10% difference from you know what it was maybe a month or two months three months ago and then it's going to improve uh that alone is going to allow you to get further at marathon pace without you know necessarily hitting the wall and then from a general health standpoint you're really looking at uh, a decreased risk for all chronic disease you know heart disease cancers a lot of those type of things are really finding out more and more how dependent those are on, uh, on diet so you improve that you know obviously you know you're talking about things like diabetes as well um there's a lot of things going on there so not only from a performance standpoint from but for a uh, general health standpoint as well i think it's it's really something crucial to be looking at um my takeaway from all of this was there was no no article I ever looked at was talking about limiting your calories. There was nothing discussing. It was just really shifting your focus from uh, low fiber foods to higher fiber foods, um, you know, more calorically dense foods, just really basically replacing poor sources with good sources and, and, and not necessarily shifting to a high fat or, you know, low fat. It was just really eating what you needed. And I strongly feel that a high carbohydrate diet is going to be 
can give you the right sources. And I think we just focus on things that aren't nutritionally dense. You know, we, we focus on processed breads and processed grains and, and pastas and things like that. And if we can shift away to eating kind of those, you know, quote unquote, raw sources of things, you're going to be much better off, you know, and remembering that you can get, you can improve your glycogen stores through eating fruits and vegetables. You know, it doesn't have to be the pastas and the breads and things like that. Uh, and I think that's huge. I think a lot of times we, we forget that and we kind of use that as an excuse to, oh, I need, I need the, the carbohydrates. Well, we can get those from other sources. Um, and also the real benefit is recognizing these where you're going to need those higher ratios that we talked about. So, you know, like I said, you know, if you follow our, our general plan where Wednesdays are an off day, you know, that one-to-one -one ratio is good. You don't need a lot of a carbohydrate. The only, the only caveat to that I would say is, you know, if you're in the heart of training and, you know, you had that big strength day on Tuesday, Wednesday's an off day, Thursday's a tempo day, you know, you still might want to keep that ratio at two to one just to make sure that you're replacing the glycogen from the Tuesday before so that you can go into that Thursday with a full, full tank, I guess to say, and uh, make sure you're, make sure you're um, doing that. But to go above and beyond that might not be necessary. And then just recognize that, you know, on your Tuesdays and Thursdays, your big workout days, and then maybe your Sunday long run, that a three to four to one ratio is, is definitely okay, you know, because you have to replace uh, what you've depleted in your stores. And then, you know, your easy days can be that kind of that standard two to one ratio of, you know, of having carbohydrates to, to, um, to the protein. Um, let me, you know, I think I missed something here. I wanted to give you some sources because this is what people are always going to um, ask you about, ask me about. Um, so let's go back to the the first slide here, um, just sources that we're looking at. That should be, I guess, a big thing that we should have went over there. Carbohydrates to aim for, you're talking about leafy greens, eat foods with lots of color like broccoli, mushrooms, peppers, sweet potatoes, fruits you're looking at, tomatoes, apples, oranges, mangoes, peaches, grapes, bananas, things like that. Uh, grains limit to whole wheat bread and tortillas, rolled quick oats. Uh, Packets, no, if you're an oatmeal eater, no packets. Um, those tend to be lower in fiber. And proteins, you're looking at egg whites. You know you know these things, lean turkey, chicken, ham. Um, I'm not going to tell you no on red meats. You can get red meats that are, that are pretty lean. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to shy completely away from red meat at all in having something that's a, a higher fat steak every once in a while is not a big deal. It's when you eat that stuff every day that you tend to uh, get into trouble. Um, low fat or non-fat yogurt, nuts and nut butters, you know, peanut butter, nut, nut, Nutella, things like that. Um, I will say this from my um, cardiac rehab days in the healthcare system, you would want to shy away, or not necessarily shy away, but be careful when you're looking at things like peanut butters or anything that's non-fat, because a lot of times with non-fat, they will put a ton of sugar in it so that it actually tastes halfway decent. So with that said, the lower fat might actually be the better product to go with just because you're gonna, you're not, they're not gonna put the, you know, you still have some sugar in there for taste and they're not gonna load it up with it like they would maybe with a non-fat. So just be careful when you look at that. So it might be non-fat, but look at what the actual sugar is in it, and it might be sky high. So just be careful of that. You know, we'd find those things with salad dressings and mayonnaise and things like that with our, with our heart patients that, you know, yeah, it's non-fat, but it's got a ton of sugar in it. So uh, just be careful with that. Uh, and lastly, healthy fats. You're looking at uh, raw nuts, natural nut butter, avocado beans, um, things like flax seeds, chia, sunflower seeds, all good healthy fats that you can have. And fat is definitely um, something you don't want to shy completely away from because it is very beneficial for, for cells and, and things like that. So it's just, you know, saturated things like saturated fat um, are tough. Um, trans fats, we, we've all heard, are, are 
almost worse for you than than maybe a saturated type of fat. But and if you want to know the difference, a saturated fat is something that is um, a solid at room temperature, so like butter, things like that. Um, unsaturated is a liquid at room temperature, um, and that's a good way of, of knowing the difference. Um, unsaturated is much healthier for you than saturated, and then you have trans fats, which are basically man-made uh, unsaturated fats that are bombarded have been bombarded with hydrogen ions to try to make it a healthy saturated fat. And anytime you start messing around with that, I think you end up asking for trouble. And I think now we we know that that is not the case for us with uh, trans fats. It was a good idea, but it didn't quite work out. So I will post this on my uh, page and I'll turn this into a uh, I'll turn this into a uh, podcast and post a video and things like that. So short, kept it under control today. Uh, I encourage you to send us questions and things like that. But uh, hey, thanks for listening. Kept it short today. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. All right. See you guys.